Hi, everyone. This is Brandon Mablios, Senior Director of Product Marketing here at Datasight. Thank you for joining our series today entitled Thriving in Investment Banking, where we hear from dealmakers globally in terms of what sort of advice they have for others in the industry. Today, I'm joined by Katie Etherington, who is Vice President and Business Manager of Equity Capital Markets for Raymond James, based out of their Toronto office. Katie, it's great to have you today. Thanks for joining. Thank you very much for having me. Perfect. First off, can you tell us a bit about your background and current day-to-day -day work? Sure. So as Brandon mentioned, my name is Katie Etherington. I work in Raymond James, uh, Canada, out of the Toronto office. Um, I'm currently the Vice President of Business Management within ECM. Uh, for a little bit of background about me, uh, you might people might be uh, surprised to know I actually have no financial background. So I actually went to Queens. I did not go to Commerce. Um, I actually went because I wanted to be a sociologist. So I wanted to be actually a social worker. So my major was in sociology and my minor was in crime and delinquency, which ironically, when a lot of people hear that, say I'm perfectly fitted for my role uh, working in ECM. Um, but to me, that's really important because a lot of people think, oh, if I'm, in, if I'm gonna go into finance, I have to be a numbers person. And that's just not the case. Within ECM, there are so many different buckets um, that live. We have, you know, of course, we have our bankers, we have our analysts, we have our associates who do that important work of financial modeling and number crunching, but we also have sales, we have corporate communications, we have management, we have syndication. And so there are so many different roles that fit that don't necessarily have to be in finance. Um, in terms of where, how I got to where I am, I've been at Raymond James for 10 years, um, I, I, don't, I don't feel like I, I, I definitely feel like it's been a decade since I started. Um, as a young 25 year old, lots of, has changed since then. Um, I actually started sort of, you know, at the very basic, I was an EA uh, to an investment banking team. I did one IPO and sort of sunk my teeth into it and actually was able to move over to syndication where I spent the majority of my career. Um, you know, just like most things, family life changes. Um, while in syndication, I had two children um, and therefore needed a little bit more flexibility in my role. And I feel very lucky to work for a company that, um, you know, values that, uh, that flexibility. And while I was on mat leave, they um, offered me a promotion within business management. And so that's where, uh, that's where I am today. Excellent. And what would you say that you like most about your role and what sort of, I guess, challenges do you experience day to day and how do you work through them? Absolutely. So I think in business management, we often say that we sort of have our fingers in everything ECM related. So what I love most about my role is that it is never the same any day. So one day I can be re uh, working on, you know, recruitment for a new banking team. The next I can be, you know, fixing the copier. It is, you are literally in, uh, you know, every, we often say that you're never too good to change a light bulb, but that really is the case. Um, what I do love most about my role is, is really sitting with the senior managing directors and working on strategy um, and also working on, you know, employee performance, engagement and culture. That really is, you know, with my background of social work, that's really where my heart lies and where I think my value lies. Um, you know, especially in a time like COVID, you know, employee engagement and retention is so important. Um, you know, I think it goes without saying that it doesn't matter what industry you're in, your most vital asset is your people. So we need to protect and engage and recruit and retain our people like we do our commission dollars. And that is something that um, you know I'm really passionate about, and I would say that is probably my favorite part um, about the role. Excellent. So I think with any sort of investment banking, capital markets, M&A role, whatever it may be um, within the industry, obviously, you know, time commitment is one element. And you'd mentioned your your mother as well. So how do you manage work life balance? And any advice for others, especially that are coming up the ranks, um, whether they just started mid level, senior. Um, that maybe you know think about how they can do better in terms of managing their work-life balance. Absolutely, um, and again, you know, during that COVID time, I think work-life balance has become a really prominent uh, topic for most people. In terms of managing work-life balance, definitely some days I do a much better job than others. 
Um, but one thing that is really important to me is at five o'clock when my kids are coming home from five until eight, I put my phone away. Um, my team knows this. So if there's something urgent that they need to, you know, get a hold of me, then they call me. But if it's just emails, I let the email sit in my inbox. At 8.30, I will log back on once my kids are in bed. But, you know, we can have really busy days, but to a five and a two-year-old, that doesn't matter. They want that time with my husband and I between five and eight. So we, we really try and give that to them as much as we can. Um, in terms of I think as a business manager, you wear many hats. As a working parent, you wear many hats too. And some days you get it right and some days you don't. And I think uh, if anything, we have to sort of give ourselves a little bit of slack and allow ourselves to have our good days and have our bad days. But in the end, um, you know, as long as we go to bed and, you know, we feel like we've, we, you know, our kids are doing well, we're employed, we're making differences in both aspects of our lives. I think we're doing well. Excellent. So, so staying on that thread of, kind of this personal element, um, obviously, you know, personal development and, and learning is important no matter what stage of your career you're in. How do you um, uh, manage and kind of continue to learn in your career and what, what sort of advice do you have for others? Absolutely. So I think, um, you know, as you move up through the ranks in every organization, there's leadership skills that you need to have. I think one of the main things that I've found is there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of programs. You just have to go looking for it. Often cases, so within Raymond James, we have some amazing um, leadership courses that we offer uh, through our Canadian as well as our U.S. affiliates. And, but outside of that too, you know, there's, you know, public speaking courses, um, persuasive presentations, things like that. I think any sort of client facing role, whether you're outside client facing or for me in particular, my clients are, you know, my bankers, my sales, but we have to all know how to, you know, how to, how to be persuasive in a presentation, how to public speak, how to be confident enough to stand up in front of people. And I think when you start looking at those courses, both outside and in, internally in your, in your, in your organizations, it's, it's really important to really make sure that you're taking full advantage of them. Um, on the other side of the spectrum, great uh, foundations, there's the uh, Women in Capital Markets, which I'm a member of. They offer, you know, lots of interesting discussion points some great speaker series and things like that. And I think that also helps to say, okay, you know, right now I'm at this point in my career, you know, how do I elevate that? How do I get to that next, next spot by partnering up with some of these great alliances and these great sponsorship opportunities, it allows you to sort of take your career um, to the next level. Yeah. And as you're speaking through it, I guess the, the idea really is to continuously take an audit of what you want to get better at. And, and then also looking at what sort of resources are available, whether they be right at your fingertips in your organization, or maybe you need to do a little bit more digging to find them. But um, it's certainly, you know, as, yeah. as you know it's, it's, it's continuously think, thinking about it and keeping it top of mind. Yeah, I often say to my juniors, you know, if I, they often say, you know, Katie, you know, with my career, you know, where, where should I be in five years? Where should I be in 10 years? And I often say the best thing to do is find someone's job that you want and then talk to them, talk to them how they got there, you know, did they take any leadership courses? Did they take any public speaking? Did they, you know, go outside and take a financial modeling course? Things like that. And, and that's often the easiest and actually the advice that my, my father gave me. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's certainly good advice, though. Excellent. Yes, absolutely. So last question for you. Um, obviously, you know, we're still in 2020 right now as we're having this conversation. And, um, you know, COVID working from home, it's been a big change for everyone, right? Um, what lessons have you taken away from this year as it pertains to the environment, how it's changed kind of your work life, um, and how will you think about taking those learnings or um, what's happened this year and, and kind of translating into next year as we move out of this pandemic, hopefully? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's the big question, I guess, is sort of when is it going to be over? I think, you know, there's a lot of positives that have come out of COVID. Obviously, there's been a lot of challenges, too, but I think... One of the main ones is something that you sort of hit on, Brand, at the very beginning, which is this work-life balance. Um, one thing that I've been able to do because of COVID, because we're all working from home, is that, you know, I've been able to drop my son off at school every day, which is something that I really didn't think I was going, was that important to me until I started doing it. Um, you know, 
without having to commute to an office, I'm able to be online at the exact same time that I would have been had I been down at the office. So I think that's certainly one thing that that I've taken away that just that time with family is really important. The second thing would be to slow down. I think especially in capital markets, we wear this badge of honor that we're very busy. You know, you, you anyone asks, oh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm very busy, you know, <laughs> which is great. We can all be busy. Um, but right now, and, and I mean busy in terms of personally, you know, we did a lot of, you know, family travel and dinners and friends and, and kids concerts. But in this COVID era, we might be busy with work, shifting things around and all the rest of it, but we're not busy because we don't have any of those extras. So slow down, take a breath. It's important to, you know, turn on Netflix and, and get into a show for two hours. It's important to, you know, do a puzzle with your kids, get something done on the business front, make a sourdough, which I know is all the rage right now is making sourdough bread. Um, but just to slow down and, and maybe not uh, put being being busy on such a, a, a such a platform or something to aspire to be. And then I guess the lastly, um, the COVID, I'm not sure if this is a COVID positive, but I would say that uh, I never in a million years thought I would be going to meetings with all of my senior managing directors with business on the top in my, you know, blouse and blazer and uh, a party on the bottom with sweatpants and slippers. So I would say, I would say I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy to, to be able to only be dressed from the top up uh, in my, in my business casual wear. So. <laughs> yep. Cer certainly the, the pants companies out there have been struggling. So. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Katie, again, thank you so much for taking the time today. This was an excellent conversation and I'm sure the audience really appreciated. So thanks again. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brandon.